the maternal dog appeasing pheromone was discovered in a time when we were working on the global group of uh, possible messages released by mammalian mothers. And at that time we were working on three species, dogs and pigs, and another species being human. And we, we were focused on uh, this topic because there were a lot of evidences that mothers were releasing something which was appeasing uh, their offspring. And we tried to uh, first to target the origin of the secretion and after looking at literature and observing it in animals we saw in dogs that the puppies were very interested in the area between uh, the mammary chains. And so taking samples from mothers belonging to different breeds and also samples from, diff from female dogs in different physiological situations, we identified something which was a group of compounds which was looking very much uh, from the same family as in the other two species. Different thanks to some compounds, but having some similarity. And so we uh, observed very quickly that just taking the native secretion, meaning the secretion from the mother, we observed that the puppies were focused at that, at this secretion, which was on a compress, which was not at all looking like the mother. And we also observed that when we were reproducing the same kind of uh, composition with synthetic compounds, we were having the same effects. These effects were attractants, meaning that the puppies were trying to join the place from which the secretion was coming. They were calming down and some, especially when they were very young, they were beginning to sleep and circle the compress where we had the secretion. And uh, when we began to work with some, some older puppies, meaning six, eight, 12 weeks, we observed that they were able to be more relaxed and to cope much more with the surrounding. That was the reason why we decided to develop an analog of this secretion to try to help puppies and dogs in coping with the surrounding and being less uh, anxious. An interesting question with uh, those maternal pheromones was to know whether or not they could be active in adult dogs, young and older dogs. And this is a question which was raised also for all species of mammals and we try to uh, look at that. Hopefully in dogs, we observed very quickly that there was another source of the same pheromone which was not coming from mothers, but which was also a release during social interaction from some other dogs. And that was very inter interesting because it was during inter-adult dog uh, interactions. And looking at uh, those uh, interactions, it was, it's very important to say that the reception, meaning the detection of pheromones, is based on the activation of some receptors. Receptors could look as a kind of very complex concept, but it's very simple. A, a receptor is a keyhole, which requires a key to be activated. The key is a pheromone. The keyhole is a receptor which is produced thanks to some genes. And what we know now is that the genes which are responsible for producing the keyhole, meaning the receptor, are still active even in adults. And all the experiments which have been done after that, just to assess the effects of the maternal dog pheromone in adult dogs, but also in senile dogs, has shown that they are receiving the message and that they react as puppies. The difference is that the kind of behavior which is addressed with uh, the pheromone is a little bit different because the expression of stress is not exactly the same in puppies and in adult dogs, but in every age of dogs and very comparably in other mammals, the maternal pheromones are able to control stress all over life. So it's a very interesting family of compounds to treat anxiety, phobias, and stress-related problems. There is a very common confusion between pheromones and odors, which are two very different kind of volatile message. Odors are like visual information or like auditory information, they require some first 
uh, learning some previous experiment with the signal to memorize what it is. For example, any dog, when they first meet a piece of cheese, they have to learn, being puppies, that this is something which is very good to eat. And after a first positive experience with cheese, they will be very attracted with that. When other dogs, which have never been exposed to, to cheese, will not be interested in that. On the contrary, pheromones are just activating a specific part of the nervous system, central nervous system, which is in charge of emotions and hormonal secretion. As a consequence for the way pheromones are detected, meaning by opening the, the vomeronasal organ, which is a small organ over the bone palate, uh, which is open thanks to tonguing behavior, which is a special mimic in dogs, where they're pushing the tongue uh, in direction of the palate, like like that, which is uh, the, the behavior described as being tonguing. Uh, as a consequence for this behavior, there is no uh, phenomenon of being accustomized or desensitized to continuous stimulation by the pheromone, as we could do when, for example, we uh, treat dogs with uh, pheromones, with uh, maternal appeasing pheromones, uh, in cases of uh, noise phobia or uh, dogs having difficulties to cope with some very stressful surrounding like being in center of a big city or uh, like being in a place where there are a lot of thunderstorms or uh, very scary noises of that kind. The synthetic maternal pheromone, which is known uh, as a product with the name Adaptil, is very interesting to cover dogs in, the situ in all the situations where coping with the surrounding is difficult, which is the natural function of the message. What is interesting is that with Adaptil, we can offer the dog something which is the natural mechanism to cope with the environment and to be able to learn, which makes that they are not anesthetized, they are not sedated, they are covered, they are helped with some mechanism which is inducing confidence, which is a function of uh, the maternal pheromone, confidence being the capability to explore, to get in touch without facing situation of stress. And so in the whole life of dogs, every situation where dogs may suffer of uh, extreme stress or chronic stress uh, will be uh, an interesting indication for Adaptil. For example, all the puppies which are facing the situation of a significant gap between the surrounding in which they developed, for example, being in the country, which is very nice for dogs, but which doesn't prepare them in many cases for living in apartments in the city with all the scary noises produced by people. But you have also all the situation where the dog will have to face a known individuals, being human, other dogs, or other animals, for example, cats. Uh, but you have also all the situation over time when dogs will have to face a very specific situation, transport, it can be going to the vet, it can be to be hospitalized or to have to stay uh, in a dog hotel for a vacation. And this is also an, a significant help for dogs when they begin to face this difficult situation, which is aging. Because during aging, there is a significant loss of adaptability and the pheromones will help, and especially Adaptil is a significant help to uh, give some support to dogs when they begin to be unable to cope with all the variations in their life, all the modification in their schedule. The adoption of a puppy is a really great time in life and every, everything looks positive. And this is the case, meaning that you are going to adopt a puppy. You are very happy about that. The puppy is usually in good health. And this is a normal situation for in the interaction between dogs and humans to have this adoption. The problem is that this adoption is in fact a very significant gap in life for puppies. This is a normal, when I say normal, it's because it's since domestication, a normal gap, a normal traumatizing situation, which is losing the mother immediately, because there is usually no more possibility to get back and being in touch with the mother. 
and having to cope with new people, other uh, surrounding, other dogs maybe, other animals, something which is new. And novelty is one of the major sources of stress. So puppies on the time of adoption are exposed to significant stress and the presence of Adaptil will really mimic the presence of the mother by releasing what is the main message for to induce confidence and to create appeasement and which is released from the mother. Which makes that thanks to having Adaptil we optimize this situation and we will create more comfort for the puppy, create some much more effective socialization and in fact create a situation of prevention to most behavioral disorders which are related to early development. Adaptil is a biological message and its efficacy is obtained thanks to activation of the brain and some mechanisms which are coping mechanisms. But most difficulties in some cases uh, are the result of very chronic and very severe behavioral disorders which will require some additional treatment. Speaking about additional treatment, it can be biological treatment which will be prescribed by the vet, but it's also using some learning methods, some behavior modification programs that will work in synergy, meaning in association, in positive association with Adaptil and make that the dog will learn something new. And especially it's very important because a dog, for example, which over time has developed a phobia of some kind of uh, a very severe room, uh, noise like thunderstorm. Usually those dogs have developed some strategy to escape like hiding in the bathroom, for example, which is a very common situation, or trying to go under some furnitures. And it works because they get in a place where they are less listening to the noise. When we will use Adaptil, the dog will have as a very common reaction to try to use his previous strategy. And people will say, oh, Adaptil doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work, it's because the dog has a strategy which was previously working, but thanks to Adaptil, the dog is now ready to learn another much more interesting strategy. So, the pheromone is just making possible to change. If we don't help, if we don't guide the dog in changing its behavior, there is no result. And of course, there are probably some other situations where uh, it's just that the indication is not properly uh, addressed. And for example, many dogs uh, which are supposed to be stressed are in fact dogs which have known inappropriate behaviors. They're not stressed, but what they have learned, like for example, biting or like uh, running after uh, uh, some uh, moving uh, uh, items like bicycles or people uh, uh, running in the, uh, the street are just dogs having some inappropriate behavior which have nothing to do with stress and anxiety. And in that case, a pheromone can't help.